Hello and welcome to the Mithril Money Securities Investment 101 course. This is Lecture 13, Pricing a Bond with Yield to Maturity. First of all, if you've been following these lectures, we just quickly need to write up our bond that we're going to be working with today. It's our usual bond. It's a $100 par value, a coupon rate of 4%, and it's maturing in three years' time. How are we going to price this bond using a yield to maturity? The first thing we need to do is we need to put on a timeline. So let's do that. There's year one, there's year two, and there's year three. So let's label those as one, two, and three. And now we can begin to price our bond. We should be able to see from the par value and the coupon rate that we're going to get back a coupon of $4 in the first year. We're going to get back a coupon of $4 in the second year. And then in the third year, we'll also get $4 but we'll also get the principal back. So we'll get the $100 back if the company hasn't gone bust before then for our third and final cash flow. Now we can label those cash flows as future value one and future value two and future value three. Okay, I want you to imagine a world in which these cash flows are three separate IOUs from the future. One is from your Auntie Maud, one is from your Auntie Sybil, and one is from your Uncle Tony. Now you go to the pawnbroker and you hand over these three IOUs and you say, I'm going to get these three payments, one in one year, one in two years, one in three years. Can you value those pieces of paper for me and give me that sum of money now? And what the pawnbroker would do is they would present value all three of these cash flows back to today. Then add up those sums. Let's say that's X, that one's Y, and that one's Z. They would then add up those three cash flows. I'm going to call that PV1, that one PV2, and that one PV3. They would add all three cash flows up. That would come to some price, which I'll call pi for price. That would be the price of the bond. So this is the bond price. You've calculated the bond price. A bond is nothing more than a series of timed cash flows. And if you want to watch our time value of money lecture, we'll figure out how we're going to present value these three cash flows back to these three different present values, which is going to give us one overall present value, which will be the bond price. How are we going to do this? The first thing we need to do is we need to pick a yield to maturity and once we've picked a yield to maturity, which will be our required interest rate, and essentially the riskier the bond, the higher the interest rate we will choose, and we will take those cash flows and we will divide each one by one plus the yield to maturity that we as the client choose, and we'll often be bidding in a market against other people, and the person who chooses the lowest yield to maturity will be paying the highest price, and so will therefore win the auction. Now that division will be raised to the power of one, with annual compounding, it doesn't really matter. But it is there, we just never normally think about it. The second payment, though, it does matter, the raising of the power, because we're going to divide that four in two years' time by one plus our chosen yield to maturity, and that will be squared. And that's because it's year two, so we square that division to come back to this Y value here. And we'll, we'll calculate this on an Excel spreadsheet in a minute or so's time. The final payment is 104 in disguise. That will also be divided by 1 plus our chosen yield to maturity. And that will be raised to the power 3 because it's 3 years. And that will come back as Z. Then we add up X, Y and Z and we come up with a bond price. How are we going to choose our yield to maturity? We go to the Mithril Money Ratings Agency and they give us a rating for the company. Now, at first they say it's an AAA rated company. So we choose a yield to maturity in that case of 2% because it's low risk, so we don't need much reward. And then Mithril Money Ratings Agency at the last minute changes its mind and says, no, no, it's a BB rated company. And we go, ah, we need a higher interest rate. I need a yield to maturity of 4%. And then at the last minute, Mithril Money Ratings Agency says, no, 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 we got it wrong. It's the wrong company. We're starting to lose our trust at this point, but let's go with it. And we say, OK, we require a 6% yield to maturity because they're a little bit more of a riskier organisation. So let's use an Excel spreadsheet then to work out the bond prices for these three differently rated but 
identical featured bonds. Now this is something I prepared earlier, as they say on all the best cookery programs. Now there's no formulas at all on here. I've just formatted it so that we don't have to waste much time changing colors and changing formats. So let's put in all the key values. The par value then, that's going to be 100. The coupon rate, 4%. The maturity we know is going to be three, so it's fairly fixed. And the yield to maturity, the first one we're going to go for is this number two here. Let's go for that one. Let's put 2% in there. What's that going to do to this table down here? Well, the first payment in the first year we know is going to be the coupon rate multiplied by the par value. That'll give us four. The second payment, same thing again. It's going to be equal to the coupon rate multiplied by the par value. And the third one is going to be equal to two little items. First of all, the coupon rate multiplied by the par value. And then we add on the par value. That gives us 104. Now we need to present value those three cash flows back to today. There we go. So this is going to be equal to that divided by power of one plus the yield to maturity that we've chosen raised to the power of the compounding period, which is one, so it doesn't really make much difference. That gives us 3.92. So $4 in a year with a 2% required yield is 3.92 today. Let's do the second one, very similar. Equal to four divided by power of one plus the yield to maturity raised to the power. This time it will make a difference of two. And you can see there that this is a smaller figure than that one because it's further away in time, so it's less valuable. Let's do the third one. This is going to be equal to 104 divided by the power of one plus the required yield to maturity, raise the power three, and we get 98. Now we can calculate the bond price. The bond price here is just going to be simply a summation of these three here. So I'll just bring up the usual sum figure and Bang, we now have a price of a bond. The price of this bond with a required yield of 2% is 105.77. Despite the coupon rate being four, this is a premium bond. We can also work out the flat yield now. And the flat yield in this case is going to be the coupon rate multiplied by the par to give us $4. That will be divided by the bond price. That gives us 3.78. Notice, slightly lower than the coupon rate, but still higher than the yield to maturity because of that loss of 5.77 at the end of the three years. Okay, let's put all those figures then in a special chart data diagram I'm building up here. So the price is 105.77, the coupon rate is four, the flat yield is 3.78, and the yield to maturity is two. What's the second one we wanted? It was 4%, so let's have a crack then at 4%. Let's just change this yield to maturity to 4%. Bang! Now, hopefully it's not a surprise to you now that that's $100. The flat yield is 4%, the yield to maturity is 4%, the coupon rate is 4%, and the price is 100. Everything's balancing. So let's stick all those things in then, into my little chart diagram, which hopefully will make sense in a minute or so's time. And finally, we wanted 6% for our C-rated bond. Okay, let's give that a crack. So we just change the yield to maturity there to 6. And that gives us a price of 94.65. Coupon rate is 4. The flat yield is 4.23. Notice higher because this is a discount bond. But the yield to maturity is much higher because of the gain of five dollars and 35 cents in three years time which is very nice okay hopefully you can see a pattern here this pattern might be easier to see if we bring up a chart so let me just do that now and then we'll talk about the pattern so i just need to reduce the screen slightly i think so we'll just do that let's pick these first two to get a chart i'm going to change the style here I prefer this one here, and I need to add a legend to that as well. So let's add a legend, that's fantastic. Now what we'll do, we'll just move this over here so we can see things better. We'll just go over there, there we are. Increase the size of the chart. Let's put these other bits of data in. So we're going to copy that, paste it into the diagram, and we'll copy that, paste it into the diagram, 
and hopefully we can now see a clear relationship. The coupon rate is fixed. You can see the blue line there. It's fixed at 4%, no matter what the price. So from 96 to 106, the coupon rate is 4. You'll notice the flat yield goes up a little bit when we're in the discount bond territory, and it goes down a little bit when we're in the premium bond territory. But the big one is the yield to maturity. It goes up enormously when we drop a few dollars off the price, and it collapses enormously when we add a few dollars onto the price. Hopefully as well you can see a really important relationship in the bond trading world. That is, as interest rates come down, bond prices go up. And as interest rates go up, bond prices come down. It's an absolutely pivotal relationship between interest rates and bond prices. And hopefully we're now starting to learn something about yield to maturity. In the next lecture, what we're going to do is we're going to be given a price. And from that price, we're then going to work out what the yield to maturity is. So look forward to that and I'll see you next time.